Great, we're here at the Ultimate Seminar and I'm here with Ebony Rani James, the Head of Digital at Sony Music. Hi Ebony, how's it going? I'm very well, thank you. I'm really excited to be a part of this event today. Um, I just got off stage after doing the panel, which is really interesting and I think it's a great, it's just a great event. I think I didn't have this when I was, you know, a student and I just think it's great to be able to see people that, um, you know, can give you some real advice you know, from working in the industry. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, what do you feel like is the most important thing for young artists to look after when they're looking after their uh, digital properties uh, as you know as a young artist you know we, we're talking about uh, uh, with the creator of the BA uh, here Minster about the fact that uh, anybody can create a Twitter account but uh, and maintain it but it's very difficult to tie that into a strategy for a release so you know what is the most important thing for a young artists to look at when they're doing that I think one thing a lot of artists do is they try and have everything they want to have a Facebook they want to have a Twitter they want to have an Instagram and you know and actually some of those platforms don't work for all artists and I think things like Facebook for example are important in terms of um, you know people searching you out but there's no point in you having a Twitter account and only tweeting once or having nothing to say because people won't follow you um, so I think people need to be really clear about who the artist is it is that they are and what they want to achieve before they kind of make a decision about where what platforms they need to be on. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, looking at uh, you know the role of, uh, uh, you know, of working at a major label uh, for, for such big artists as well. So uh, how have things uh, changed? Uh, 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 in the last you know three four years uh, with uh, the rise of streaming services for example has that changed uh, the strategies that you implement uh, for a release as well most definitely and I guess one of the biggest changes is that we have less physical music stores so actually people being able to just go out and buy a record physically you know you don't have that option as much anymore um, and I was at the BPI yesterday actually and we were talking about in terms of you know the digital music's been around for say 10 years Years, but actually there's still a huge range of people that don't buy music digitally um, and they might buy one compilation and then an our compilation might do you know one of the now compilations will do 180,000 a week because there are a lot of people that aren't necessarily um, dedicated to one artist to buy one album and actually they want something that's being curated and the catalogue market is very healthy at Sony Music our catalogue department are amazing and we sell a lot of records off of the back of catalogue um, so yeah, I think there's there's different things. I think streaming is very important as well. It's a new revenue stream for us. Um, and I think that there are things that are happening. There's a lot of talk about YouTube subscription service, which will again change the way in which people are consuming music, say on YouTube or other platforms. Um, yeah, we have to, you know, especially within digital marketing, it's constantly evolving. So it's def we definitely have to change our strategy to move with the market. Of course, looking at digital marketing as well, uh, I hear people uh, sometimes say that, you know, it's no longer digital marketing, it's just marketing. <laughs> Did you agree with that? Yeah, no, I agree with that. And I try not to work in isolation. So, you know, there's this thing now called multi-screen viewing. You know, when you're watching a TV show, you're often on your iPad or your phone at the same time or your laptop or your desktop. And I think it's detrimental to think about marketing or advertising in one way and I think it's very much a joined I think you know we all specialize in our areas but the plan is that you know I want you to be able to see someone on TV and then automatically go online and be able to do something and maybe you just go online and watch their video and then you go to the supermarket the next day and you buy the record it's not about you know one channel it's about everything you know working together as one and all elements are really important Absolutely. And it's also the case that in the last few years, because of uh, you know this segmentation of the audience as well, uh, things have changed in the sense that there's no longer a one formula fits all uh, to release an album. You really have to think really carefully about who the audience is of the new artists that you have. For example, we saw Laura Mavula do incredibly well this year. And so I guess all of that marketing campaign was based around who the audience was, who do you wanted to reach, and how you went about doing that. Yeah, I think if you talk about Laura Mavula specifically, she's an artist who's very original. Um, she knew what music she wanted to make and she didn't bend that for anything. Um, I think that you know Sony have signed her knowing what she was about and that was a risk. Oh, from my perspective, that's a risk because she's not an obvious artist. You can't say, well, she fits here um, and this is a radio station she'll be on 
on and you know but they were very creative and Nadine um, Bissode who I work with at Sony as well very creative marketing campaign um, I'm currently working on an artist called Foxes um, who is amazing and you know we see great things from her in 2014 she's done features with Zed on Clarity and also with Rita Mental um, but she got one audience off the back of those collaborations. She also has her own core fan base. And recently we got a sync with Debenhams, which has increased her fan base by a whole new, you know, we, we're getting a whole new demographic of an audience off the back of that. So it's multi-tiered in that way. And you've done a similar thing with Everything Everything, of course, last year. Uh, yeah, so I don't work Everything Everything directly, but again, that, you know, is a really interesting campaign, I think. Um, you know, creatively, I'm obsessed with you know the way in which they are they they're being marketed as well. You know, and then more recently with RCA again, I don't work this band, but Codaline. Um, you know, and me working with the Associated Labels Division, we've got acts like Don Broco, who are a rock act, but very much um, can cross over into the mainstream in terms of um, you know the potential of the band as well. Yeah, so it's great, and uh, you know. Uh, this looks like a fantastic day for students and it was incredible to see the room so packed, wasn't it? Oh, it was amazing and I just, I love it and I think there needs to be more events like this and I think, you know, Kwame is amazing and for putting this on, um, I think that the students here should really take the information because a lot of people don't get this um, and I think, you know, overall the theme is that it's very much possible whether you're an artist or a songwriter or want to get into the industry, you know, like I said on stage, I don't come from a background of people who work in music, I didn't know anyone who worked in music to kind of get me in the door um, and I think it's important to just draw home the message of hard work. Absolutely. Ultimately. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.